Okay. All right. Um, my topic tonight was making use of herbs and spices, or mainly herbs, in your um, in your home, and to see that they don't go to waste. And um, I also had talked about the fact that herbs are mainly the leaves of plants, such like parsley, cilantro, oregano, and spices mainly come from roots, bark, and seeds of plants. And then you have things like cilantro, which is also, it's an herb, but the coriander, which is the seed of the cilantro plant, is considered a spice. And uh, a while ago, you mentioned the uh, spice fish, and I think it doesn't, the spice fish develop little seeds that taste like pepper. They're more like, they're more like allspice. Um, okay, because there's a restaurant that Amos Mill down in uh, uh, near Rogersville, they use that spice fish uh, seeds on their table for seasoning. So that's, that's different, I think. Um, <clears throat> as far as the uses for herbs, you have your culinary uses and for all forms of cooking from uh, appetizers, drinks, desserts, everything. I mean, there's a way to use herbs in everything that you do. Uh, then there's the medicinal types of herbs, and I'm not really into that this mu that much, but you know, I, I do have an interest in it, and uh, I've been studying more about it. I know that medicinal herbs are used quite a bit in this country, but as well as in foreign countries, like for instance in China, they would prefer to have our ginseng than they would their own that they grow. So there's something about the ginseng that's grown in uh, uh, Southwest Virginia, East Tennessee, Western North Carolina, that's supposed to be really, um, it's very potent from what I understand. Um, you can use herbs in decorative arrangements. You can make wreaths. You can use it in flower arrangements, um, everything. Um, it's good for pest repellents. Someone mentioned uh, Santolina a while ago, and Santolina is good to uh, put in with your, uh, your garments and things, and it's supposed to repel moss and things like that. So, um, you know, there's lots of other things you can do with them. Uh, they use herbs in perfume. Uh, lavender is one of the main herbs used in perfume, but others are used as well. And um, embalming, believe it or not, uh, the Egyptians used certain herbs like thyme and uh, basil and all different kinds of things like that, uh, rosemary to help with embalming. And there is a new trend now. Um, I don't know if it's legal in Virginia or Tennessee or you know surrounding states, but I have heard that some people are, are using that type of thing to and have themselves uh, put in with a casket. The casket is wood, and then they bury the casket in the ground, and you know, the, just let the body and the casket and all just break down. So, you know, there is a trend towards natural things like that. I don't know if y'all would be interested in that. I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> um, also, there's lots of gardening uses for herbs. Uh, Joy's mentioned pollinators, and uh, I use uh, pineapple sage and things like that in my, near my vegetable plants so that I have pollinators drawn in, and I have mountain mint and a lot of different things like she uses. Uh, then, of course, there's all the culinary uses, which is what we're gonna talk about mainly tonight. Uh, they make a not really super nice ground cover. I love to use uh, oregano as a ground cover. I have problems with deer. I mean, really bad problems with deer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, anything like that that the deer don't like is a good thing. So uh, I have planted quite a few oregano plants to keep away the deer. They don't like anything that smells strong. Uh, they're also great to use for borders and edging on a garden. Uh, several gardens that I've visited have used uh, parsley all around the edge of their garden. Now the parsley draws in uh, the pollinators and 
uh, feeds the butterflies and things like that and the, uh, the caterpillars, but as well, you know, it's really pretty and uh, stays nice and green. Um, then you have your trees, the bay tree, and of course hops. Um, I don't know, are you all growing hops in Greene County? Anyone? I can't hear. Yep, there, uh, there's a few people that are growing hops. No. Okay, I know in uh, Southwest Virginia, there's a bunch of people that are growing hops. It's quite popular over there. Um, a friend of mine, just she grows it in her yard. Her, her son is involved in one of the breweries. And uh, so she's got some hops plants in her yard. She just makes sure she has a trellis or something for them to grow on. And they're really pretty. And uh, they are also good pollinators. Um, some other, some, excuse me, now I don't know how to go back. Okay. Um, there's some harvesting do's and don'ts. Um, you don't want to, you want to harvest your, um, your herbs about two days after a rain to give them plenty of time to dry out, unless you just absolutely need them at that particular time. And you do want to harvest the herbs, uh, Anytime there's enough growth to withstand clipping, um, like uh, basil and things like that, uh, just about any herb does well if you clip it. And uh, um, it just, you know, it causes the plant to bush out. Um, you also do want to uh, uh, collect the edible flowers, like the chive flowers, the calendula, uh, the garlic chives, uh, those flowers do great in salads and things like that. And even the basil flowers, you know, if I'm harvesting basil and I have some blooms on it, I just, I harvest them too and put them in there. And uh, um, the chives we'll talk about later, but uh, it's good to make vinegars and things out of. Um, also do harvest your, uh, annual herbs like cilantro and dill to keep them growing and keep them from going to seed, unless you want the seeds. Um, make sure that you cut back your herbs in the spring, the perennial herbs like uh, the sorrel and the chives, and like I think Joy mentioned, cut the chives back to the ground and uh, that will make them prolifer proliferate and grow more and you have another whole season of them. Uh, Jane, uh, we have a question. Okay. Um, is there anything other than beer and pollination that, that hops can be used for? You know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Kangaroos. Okay, that's fair. But um, I know that it is very, very popular uh, to grow hops now. Uh, you know, the, the beer thing is so big. And don't they, is it yeast derived from the hops plant? I don't know too much about beer, so. Well, I don't either, because I don't. <laughs> so, anyhow, my friend was just telling me about it. The, blo she, the blossoms are really beautiful. They're used for wreaths and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. Thank you. Um, used for bittering, flavoring, and stability. What what did they say? Glenn just said they're used for bittering, flavoring, flavoring and, stability, and agent. stability agent in beer. Okay. That doesn't, I don't think there's another purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the reason I was saying yeast is when you're, uh, when you're working with uh, yeast and letting it uh, bloom, sometimes it smells like beer. So. Oh. I don't know. It's I'll also used. In, <laughs> it's also used in as a medicinal herb. So I'm not sure how that's used as a medicinal herb, but that could go back a very long time. Uh, I'm not sure about that either. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome anytime. Uh, some don'ts about harvesting herbs is don't stress the plant by cutting it back more than a third, and I think Joy mentioned that. Um, uh, 
don't cut them back uh, like perennial herbs. Wait until uh, late. Like I cut, I had some sage in my raised bed, which I'll show you a picture of in a little while. And I, it looked nasty. Uh, there were a lot of dead uh, branches and leaves and things. So I, I pruned them and cleaned them up a little, like a week, probably a month ago. And uh, it's, it's looking really good now, okay? Um, and if you have brown stems and things on your herbs, if you'll uh, cut them off and don't use them for uh, your culinary uses, but save them and put them in on your grill. If you're charcoal grilling or something and you have the aromas of the herbs that will come up. And you could also use them as skewers if you're doing a, like a kebabs and that type of thing. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the different methods for actually preserving your herbs. And uh, you can see a list there. Um, if you're going to grow them, you ought to come up with a way to preserve them. And there's so many different ways and it's so easy to do. And even if you just have a few herbs, like uh, when I was preparing this program, I went out and cut a few things and I laid them between paper towels on my kitchen cabinet and they're already dried. So all I have to do is like put them in a container and they'll be ready to use. Um, the first, first method of, uh, drying herbs is like uh, tray drying um, or bunch drying. And I'm just gonna, I think I'll just go on and show you the pictures and that'll be more clear to you. Uh, when you get ready to prepare them for drying, um, you want to make sure that you uh, wash them only if they're dirty. Now, you know, if you go out to your garden and there's not been any uh, splatter from the rain like we're having right now on your herbs if, or, or if you have them in a pot on your porch, you don't have to worry about washing them. But if you, you know, if they have soil or sand or something on them, you want to wash them in cold water and dry them either in a dish towel or a paper towel. And you want to harvest them. Um, you want to harvest after uh, the dew has dried. You want to make sure it's on a nice hot warm day um, that makes that's the best time and also that's the time when the essential oils are at their highest and the best time of day is between like 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. because usually by that time the dew has dried off and the herbs are uh, you know uh, ready to be harvested and they're nice and warm and you have all those good essential oils and you want to harvest them before they bloom uh, now this is this is some pineapple sage. I hope you can see that. That I picked. Uh, I had a plant that I hadn't put in the ground yet, so I pruned it up. And uh, this is how I do my herbs when I dry them. I put a rubber band around them, and then I take a paper clip. I don't know. Can you see the paper clip? Yes, yes we can. Whoops, went to okay. the next slide. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Okay, yeah. and uh, I just open up a paper clip and put that on it, and then you can hang those on a string in a, uh, usually a dry place. It needs to be fairly warm. Uh, dark is good, uh, but it can, it can be even in your kitchen. Um, I, back here on my kitchen cabinets, I've got two little sets of herbs that I have extra. I'm sorry, was somebody asking a question? Okay, I have two little bunches of herbs back there on my cabinet hanging. And you know, they dry in your kitchen, especially if you have a, uh, a heat pump, because you know, a heat pump, unless you've got a humidifier on it, takes all the, uh, the uh, uh, moisture out of the air. Okay, another way is just what I call tray drying. And you can see that's just a, a uh, plain uh, sheet pan and I put a cooling rack on it and I just lay the herbs on there and, and it, they'll dry in just a few days inside your house. If you want to cover them, uh, you can use some cheesecloth or something like that, but that works exceptionally well. So, you know, it, it's not rocket science. It's very easy to do. Uh, 
paper towels. Just take out some paper towels and put your herbs between the paper towels and they'll dry really quickly inside the house. And you can also microwave dry the herbs. These are some that I cut like this week and I would put another layer of paper towels over top and you, I would put it in a microwave on high. Our microwaves now are so powerful that probably one minute at a time and then test them and do another minute if you need to or 30 second increments to see till you get them kind of dry. Uh, then you may want to take them out and let them finish. If you go too far, you may just totally turn them to dust. So don't go overboard on the microwave drying. And you can um, probably go on um, one of the uh, extension websites and it will tell you the exact directions. And I do have a handout that I did not send to Melanie because I need to scan it and send to her with recipes and directions and things. So I will do that. Okay, another method is the dehydrator drying. And um, since everyone is different, you need to just follow your own, follow the directions of your own dehydrator, but just don't overdo it. <laughs> Cause you know, they need to be dried at a fairly low temperature and for not nearly as long as your vegetables or fruits or anything else that you're drying. Um, now this is called salt drying, and I did this this week. I needed to prune my rep, my rosemary because it lasted um, all through the week, <coughs> or excuse me, all through the winter. And uh, I just took a container, and that is kosher salt, and I put lots of rosemary in it, and also I put lemon rind. And if you have a uh, uh, microplane grater it's great to grate off that lemon rind and then you can put it in there and you can just uh i i leave the lid off of it for a while because my rosemary was really damp and um, it's already started it's almost dried now and uh, i put it outside on the deck <laughs> deck rail so that you could see it well and uh, you know, you can do any kind of herbs in salt. And uh, this would be really good to rub like a roast with or chicken or something you're getting ready to grill. And it's, it's just very good. And you know, the rosemary has that pine-like flavor to it. Oh. Okay, uh, the next thing is uh, freezing herbs. Okay. Um, I have a question about the last one with the rosemary and the salt. Do you leave it in that and use it as that, just as it is in there? Or do you do anything to it and put it into a different container at all? Is it refrigerated? Uh, well, I would probably put it in a smaller container because as it dries, it's going to, uh, you know, the rosemary is going to reduce in size. And uh, no, you don't have to store it in the refrigerator or anything. Um, now I would not put garlic in there probably, <laughs> but any kind of herbs would be okay. Like, okay. Uh, okay. Tom, I've done Tom before and things like that. We also have another question. Okay. Do the various drying mechanisms or methods, I suppose, um, affect the final flavor? Does one way of doing it keep more flavor or take away flavor? Well, from what, from what I've been able to, to read and study, um, I've found that the best way, and you'll see this in a few more slides, but I'll go ahead and tell you about it, is to uh, mix your, chop up your herbs, mix them with either olive oil or melted butter and freeze them in little ice cube trays and freeze them and then after they're frozen take them out and put them in the ziploc bags or some kind of a container and that that supposedly keeps the best flavor uh wolf does that answer your question okay all right now this is what you call flash freezing 
And you know, a lot of people are doing things with sage and brown butter now. This is sage. And they have just taken the leaves off the sage and frozen them on a plate. And then they'll take them and put them in a container after they're totally frozen and put them back in the freezer. And then you could, uh, this is called flash freezing. And you could do several different herbs like that. Um, I have done uh, basil and things like that, basil and parsley. And uh, then I put them in a Ziploc bag. And uh, when I get ready to make spaghetti or something, I just go in the bag and break some off and put it in the spaghetti. Uh, the sage here would probably use be used for the uh, uh, pasta or something that's done with the brown butter and the the sage, or a lot of people are flash frying, deep frying sage and using it as a garnish on different foods. So, you know, you could do it that way. Okay, some other methods for freezing herbs, and this is what I was telling you about. You can chop up your herbs real fine and add them either to olive oil or some other neutral oil and you can or you could put them in with melted butter whatever your desire is and then you just put it put all that in the little ice cube trays and um, then put it in the freezer and after they're frozen transfer transfer them to some permanent container storage and you can also if you don't want to use oil you can do the same thing in water and from what i have read and um People have done some studies and they found that uh, the herbs are best, their best flavor comes from freezing this way. And you can actually buy herbs in the grocery store like this in little pop-out containers. Have you all seen them? They're frozen. And uh, I don't know, I'm gonna hold this up. I don't know if you can see it. This little container came out of uh, um, coating chocolate, melting chocolate, like you dip strawberries and use for holidays. And I thought, boy, that would be a great container to use if you didn't have any ice trays. And a lot of people don't have ice trays now, so that's a choice. Okay, and this shows what it looks like. And you can also do, um, you can do herb butters, and I really, really like to do herb butters. I, I personally like to do like chopped parsley, um, lemon rind, or you know, lemon zest, and maybe some chopped garlic and mix in with your softened butter. And then you could put it in little containers, or you can even put it in plastic wrap and just roll up the plastic wrap and then put it in a, a zip bag or a uh, aluminum foil and freeze it. And then when you want something, you want those herb butters to go on your meats that you've grilled or vegetables or uh, uh, breads or anything, you just take it out and slice off what you need. But you can uh, mix all kinds of things with it. Uh, um, any kind of herb combination that you want. You can also put cheese in with it like uh, Parmesan cheese or some type of grated cheese would really be nice. Okay, here are some other uses for herbs. Um, making the herbal vinegars, there's all kinds of recipes out there. You can use fresh herbs and uh, usually you need to heat the vinegar in a non-reactive container. Um, no, you know, you don't want to heat it in aluminum or anything like that, but a non-reactive container and you don't want to boil it or anything. You just want to get it good and warm and then you Put, pour that into a bottle with your herbs. Um, and you can go online to different spots and uh, order bottles, decorative bottles and things like that to make, uh, make your herbal vinegars and herbal oils. The thing about herbal oils that I will tell you is that you do not want to use uh, fresh herbs in them. You only want to use dried herbs like uh, dried rosemary or dried basil or whatever. And you do not want to use any uh, fresh garlic in any, any type of oil because that will cause, it actually can cause botulism. And so when you see um, 
herb oils or herbal blends of oils in the grocery store, usually they've been made with dried herbs and uh, seasonings. And uh, I don't know if you've been to some of the restaurants that do dipping oils and things like that, but that's, that's real simple to do. And uh, when I send your recipes, I'll send you a recipe for your own homemade dipping oil, which is good. You can also make jams and jellies, or you can add uh, the herbs to the jams and jellies you already make, like strawberries are coming in right now. So if you have some basil or something like that, that'd be great in your strawberry jam or jellies. Um, actually now, the <laughs> there's a, there's a liquor store down the road for me. I go in there and look around occasionally. I don't drink, so you know, I'm not I'm not a prude or anything. It's just not my thing. But they actually have botanical flavored spirits now. And you can do your own cuz I tried it. Uh you can put herbs in your like vodka or some some other clear uh spirit and you know, flavor them and then use those in your drinks. Uh, you can make teas. I've made lemon verbena tea and mint tea. And uh, I consider ginger also a, an herb. And, you know, you can make teas out of any of those. Would things. you be using those dry like you would be in the oils? Or would you be using them fresh if you're putting them into a spirit? Uh, you could do either way. Okay, and um, someone asked, how are frozen oils different? Do you, don't you use fresh herbs in them, or do you dry the herbs before you put them into the oil mixture to freeze no, them? No, you use fresh herbs. Okay. Sue, does that answer your question? No, because I thought that if you used those herb-flavored oils, that okay. you could use fresh. Okay, no, if you're doing the herb flavored oils, I'm sorry. How's that different? I, I, thought, I thought you were talking about the uh, ice tray ones. No, uh, I was because it sounded the same as herb flavored oils. Well, no, that, the, herb, the oils in the ice cube tra uh, trays, that, they are just a carrier for the herbs, and they protect the herbs when they're frozen and you don't lose all the essential oils and things like that. But now if you were doing herb flavored oils for a bottle of oil, you would need to use dried ones. Oh, okay. okay. Because you're not gonna refrigerate, unless you're gonna refrigerate it. <laughs> and you know, most of the time we don't refrigerate our oils. Am I? Right. Is that I'm clear to everybody, Sue? Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Trish, okay, I'm Trish, sorry. Do you have another question at all? No, Trish just said, oh, yum, yum, yum. And I know you have some beautiful recipes to share, so everybody's <laughs> really looking forward to that, too. Okay, uh, I will get them to her. Uh, you can also make simple syrups out of your herbs. You take one cup of uh, sugar and one cup of water, just regular granulated sugar, and one cup of water, bring that to a bowl and put your herbs in it of whatever you want. Like I love pineapple sage done this way, or you could do a vanilla bean or you could do lavender and then you can use those in drinks or whatever, or as a glaze on cakes, you can, uh, you know, brush them on your cakes and things like that. Uh, like the lavender simple syrup is great in lemonade. So, you know, or tea, a lot of people do it. Like, I like the lemon mint done in iced tea. I think that makes a nice sweetener for iced tea. And uh, some other things you can do would be to make the uh, sachets. And some people actually use herbs wrapped in one of those, uh, put in one of those little dried herbs, excuse me, dried herbs in a little sachet bag and put in with their dryer. And if you use the, uh, some people use the dryer balls now. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, uh, they're like a tennis ball, but they're made out of wool and you're supposed to use them in place of uh, fabric softener. And uh, then people sometimes put the little dried packs of sachets in with their clothes. So you could do that. 
but you'd have to dry quite a few herbs to to have enough to do that through the winter probably <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and you can also use uh, the herbs to decorate crafts and things if you have herbs that are out of date that's a good way to you can use like glue on a styrofoam ball and then roll, roll it in herbs, dried herbs, and it makes a pretty little uh, decoration for a dish or something like that. Okay, now here's a picture of some herbal vinegars, and you can see they've used all kinds of vinegars. Uh, I, I personally like to use uh, like white wine vinegar or something like that, and uh, if you put chive blossoms in it, it makes a beautiful pink uh, vinegar. And then down at the bottom, you can see all kinds of uh, um, little bottles of uh, jams and jellies made with herbs. Um, I know all of you have tried mint jelly probably before. So, um, and here's an example of uh, an herbal tea made with lemon verbena. And that that's very, very good. You just, uh, Bring your water almost to a boil, but don't boil it. And uh, then insert the, the fresh cut herbs and let them steep for probably about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, something like that. <clears throat> okay, I think I put my pictures on the wrong side. Y'all can't see them very well. Um, this is a picture of uh, my, my garden. Um, these are onions, and I planted sets of onions back in the fall. And I just stuck them in this little, this is a, one of those uh, livestock tanks, and it's full of compost and good soil. But I put the uh, sets in there in the fall. And then I let them grow, of course, and we've had <clears throat> fresh cut green onions all, all spring. And then whatever's getting too big to use as a fresh green onion, um, I will leave and let them form a bulb. And then <clears throat> later in the summer, I will bend over the stems and let the bulbs come to the top and let them dry. And I did this last winter and we had, uh, we had our own little cute little onions until uh, probably January uh, by doing this in this one one um, trough so and the deer don't bother them okay <clears throat> this is in a one of my raised beds and these are two kinds of sages um i did this the bought one in the front the bottom that's uh, just common sage and i'm not really sure the variety of the sage in the back but it's starting to bloom and those are the ones that I cut and pruned back in the, uh, you know, just like a month ago. So you can grow, you can grow uh, herbs and things in anything. Uh, <clears throat> this is just a, a tub. And uh, this is uh, the blue hyssop, which is a great pollinator. And I did cut all the blooms off last year so I didn't have seeds coming up everywhere. But you can use the, the flowers on the blue hyssop for, uh, you know, as in salads and things like that. It has, the flowers have kind of a lemony taste to them. But the, it's a great pollinator as well. And there you can see my, <coughs> excuse me, there you can see my uh, chives. And they are blooming. And uh, I'm going to harvest the blooms and make some chai vinegar a little in before long. And they're edible. They're great in salads. And the garlic chive flowers are good too. Now they're usually bigger, larger, and they're white. I'll show you some garlic chives in a minute. This is the rest of my trough here. You may notice I have uh, garlic planted in it and I have parsley. And you can't see them, but back there in the back on the sides, I have radishes. So um, those are all things that uh, the deer don't eat. Um, <clears throat> this is my, these are some of my garlic chives. And I don't know if you can see, but right in the center of the picture, <laughs> there's some asparagus coming up because they are growing in my asparagus bed. 
and I need to pull them out, but I just haven't had the nerve to do it yet. Okay, if you're cooking with fresh herbs, um, dry versus fresh, you need to remember that if you're using a container with dried herbs, one teaspoon is equal to one tablespoon of fresh. And uh, And always put in too much dried if you're trying to, you know, if your recipe calls for fresh herbs and you're supposed to use a tablespoon and you put a tablespoon of dried, then you've got three times as much. So uh, you don't want to do that. Um, dried, dried over herbs are much more concentrated and I always take, uh, if I'm getting ready to put dried herbs in my spaghetti sauce or something, uh, I will just pour them out in my hand, measure them out, and then I take just my palms of my hands and I rub them together. And um, that releases the essential oils and um, all every year. Now, I don't know how many people do that. If you looked in my cabinet right now, you'd probably find some dill that's been in there for much longer than a year <laughs> and some other herbs. So, uh, you know, I don't know how good people are about doing that. Jane, we yes. have a question. Somebody asked, how do you measure a tablespoon of fresh herbs? Uh, chop them up and then measure. Now, do you pack it down when it's in the tablespoon? I probably would. I wouldn't pack it real hard, but uh, it's like packing brown sugar. You know, you don't want to pack it till it's solid but you want to press down Perfect. on it okay. yes okay Aileen I hope that answers your question thank you thank you okay Jane. all right and in closing herbs are probably the easiest thing in the world you're going to grow uh, they'll grow in any kind of soil uh, Joy said to put compost in and things like that that's true but they'll, they'll even grow in clay soil. They'll grow on rocks. And I mean, if you go to uh, some of these uh, uh, larger gardens and things, you're going to find uh, rosemary and uh, thyme and things like that growing over the rocks. And, you know, just as long as they have water occasionally and they don't have to have a lot of nutrients in the soil and not much fertilizer at all. Um, so, you know, um, that that's the simplest way to tell you and i i put herbs in my plants in my pots that i do on my deck and front porch in the summer and uh, like i say i also use it in my borders but uh, i always try to get variegated sage to go in as one of the uh what is it fillers as one of the fillers <laughs> thrillers and spillers uh, I love the variegated uh, plants and lots of times I'll put uh, uh, in the borders on my sidewalk, I have thyme and things like that. So, um, you know, just use your herbs anywhere you want to. I mean, it they're really, really nice and they add so much to your garden and they're good pollinators. I have a question for you, Jane. Um, <laughs> it, you say use thyme. Now, I have a lot of thyme in a couple of different places. Can I just divide that and take it out is it is it delicate or will it be hardy uh, to transplant yeah 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 when just it spreads if you'll just you can almost reach down under it and uh, lift it up and as long as you've got some roots and things on it it will be okay oh okay use. thank you but you just need to make sure you have some roots <laughs> okay thank you very much okay um and of course herbs add uh, tremendous flavor and aroma to your meals. Uh, I don't think there's anything better than uh, like uh, sliced fresh tomatoes in the summer with a piece of basil and some mozzarella cheese and uh, uh, balsamic vinegar. I mean, you know, what else can you get? That's just wonderful. <laughs> um, they also are high in vitamin C. They have some minerals in them and um, um, and they add lots of fiber to your dishes as well. And I think those are things that we all need. Um, so please try some herbs this year. Um, I'll send you some recipes and 
they work. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention was, uh, and I failed to do so back when we were talking about freezing herbs. Um, I like to make um, pesto with uh, different kinds of herbs. You can make pesto with lots of different varieties of herbs. For instance, uh, basil pesto is the most common. You can also use the greens off of uh, um, carrots and they taste like carrots. Um, and you can use uh, uh, parsley. I love parsley pesto. And a lot of people don't like um, <clears throat> pine nuts. Well, don't be uh, <clears throat> controlled by a recipe. Try other things. Pecans do well in pestos. Uh, uh, walnuts do exceptionally well. Almonds, uh, you can use, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Not hickory. Uh, <laughs> There's another kind of nuts. I had it written down here. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Cashews? Oh. Um, <coughs> well, you could use cashews, but they don't stay real crunchy. Okay. Um, I said almonds. I meant to say hazelnuts. So you can try lots of different things. And, uh, you know, throw herbs in everything. When you make a loaf of bread, throw some herbs in it. Uh, you know, experiment. And uh, I, I appreciate you all having us this year. Uh, I hope that you'll all stay safe and uh, social distance and wear your mask as much as possible if you have one. Hopefully you do. And hopefully no one has the virus or will get the virus in that area. And do you have any questions? Um, I think you've answered pretty much all of them, but uh, there's nothing else in the chat box. Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to ask? Well, nobody's speaking up, so I'm going to assume that 